Hey, hi guys, welcome to the Quant Lab. The Quant Lab में आपका स्वागत है. In this video, I am going to be talking about one of the most requested conversations in the machine learning space. A lot of people have asked me as to how do you proceed with feature engineering and what are the steps to get into it. So this is an introductory video about feature engineering. I will be talking about three things. We will go into a quick overview of what it is and what is the space which you can explore specific to building trading strategies. Second, we'll look at a sample Excel sheet where we'll take, uh, you know, a list of some examples of those features. These are really simple ones. And then finally, as always, we will also take a look at some Python code, which will show how to, you know, generate and build these features. Now, this is not an exhaustive masterclass or anything. This is just a high level conversation. Stick with me till the very end. And a very humble request, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe. I talk a lot about convergence of machine learning, AI with financial engineering and that how that applies into trading space. Let's get started. So as you see on the screen, uh, feature engineering is a process. It is effectively the concept where you try and transform the existing data or look for external features which are influencing your prediction or which is effectively you know significant to making prediction and prediction in this case almost always is predicting stock price there could be a couple of other predictions you could do when we are dealing with stock prices it could be something like you know you want to do risk assessment and you're building a machine learning model for that you are building some sort of a reinforcement learning model for portfolio optimization but largely speaking you know, the idea is to have variables or factors which influence the machine learning process and can be used as an input for decision making. So that's what feature engineering is. It's a very, very important step. Let's move on. And uh, the next idea is we'll talk about how to get into it or rather how to get started and how to, you know, just a very simple process. So the idea is you would want to collect the data as you know natural as it gets. And you can, you know, scrape the data on the internet. You could be using APIs. You could have custom built databases. And these could be any kind of data. It could be, as the article says, you know, price data, news, articles, social sentiment, macroeconomic indicators, weather, trading log, your own trading history, uh, you know, market depths, uh, similarly priced other stocks from the same industry or, you know, uh, peers or competitors, those kind of stuff. It could be, you know, uh, balance sheet statements, financial statements, anything and almost everything could be thought as relevant in this space because it's a very vast space. Uh, you should start, assuming you're starting into it scratch, don't boil the ocean, look for the common ones and then start. The next step that is, is, you know, you have to go through a series of steps which are very standard. You clean the data, you pre-process it, uh, you know, you fix the data by patching up the missing, you know, removing the outliers or dealing with the outliers rather than removing or uh, doing deduplication, normalization, scaling operations, different sort of, uh, you know, techniques that apply where, uh, which are suitable and essential for machine learning. And finally, what you do is you explore and analyze the space to understand the relationships, the pattern, you could be using statistics, you could be using, uh, you know, charting, plotting, visualization, tons of different techniques that can help you get started with it. So that's a very basic idea about the process of how do you do feature engineering. It's a science in itself. There used to be a very nice book about feature engineering itself from O'Reilly. Do check it out uh, if you're more deeply interested. Though that book is not specific to trading. So, you know, it's go into it if you are only interested in learning about feature engineering. Finally, let's talk about three different methods or uh, ways that you can apply where, uh, you know, you want to, which, which you can use to generate features. The first is domain knowledge and domain knowledge in this space talks about, you know, how much well, how well do you know the space? You could be doing, you know, ratio, uh, ratio analysis, financial statements, price data, technical indicators, any sort of information from the space, which is domain knowledge. The second is you could be using, you know, mathematical or statistical methods. You could be doing wave transform, Fourier transform, feature analysis, principal components. 
which can further uh, you know help you uh, let's say generate features and lastly what we are trying to talk about is use machine learning itself to generate and discover more complex relationships or pattern for example you can use auto encoders generative gan networks uh, you know llms are very popular these days any and everything that can help you generate more features now how do you go about doing this is something which i'm not going to talk in this video i'll talk about the first two and we'll take a look at the python code for it all right so that's the overview about it let's let's move forward and take a look at before getting into the code i want to you know look at this sample example yeah so i probably want to make this slightly bigger so that it's more readable so uh, what I have is this is a good idea for you to you know build and more of a process so while i was doing this i really thought that you know it's it would not be good to randomly think about it or leave them in the code so what i did is i have the feature type feature name description and some example values and these are just giving me a simple idea and a process to capture the features and then eventually what i can you know have here is something like a validated column which could be yes no something like that and i can further add in comments as to whether this was useful in what scenarios it was useful so this becomes more like a work log itself so there's three, four types of indicators that we're talking about. One is the pricing data, which could be OHL CV. These itself are features if you think about it. And a small description, I think everybody knows it and the values. Then you could have simple technical indicators. The common ones, you could do 50, 20, uh, SMA, EMA, RSI, MACD, stuff like that. And the description here. You could have sentiment scores, uh, you know, that are neutral, uh, positive or negative about a certain topic or theme and you could have economic indicators like gdp growth unemployment rate inflation rate it might be very difficult to directly think about how would a gdp growth or an unemployment rate influence uh, i would say uh, the price of a certain stock however when you are relying on machine learning rather than going macroeconomic data you could uh, probably see if these stocks are uh, in belong to a certain industry and uh, they are influenced by certain changes in the market uh, which can further be derived from these indicators you can make this further complex for example you could go to a more complex calculation of atr bollinger band stochastic and you can do compound sentiment scores you could do interest rates etc etc and all of these could be also used so this is some and these are some generic examples of how do you uh, you know leverage feature engineering into your system now let's go on to the last segment of the conversation again if you have stuck till this video till now thank you for watching and please do subscribe please do like share in your network that could really really help me all right uh moving on to the usual stuff which i always do let's see let me just make this slightly bigger that happened yeah so what i'm going to do is this this is not a very long code so it's it will probably be over very quickly so the usual imports uh you know you have finance pandas tlib matplotlib seaborn but i also thought of pulling some uh, machine learning based stuff i was trying to experiment but i realized it's much more complex and i wanted to be exhaustive rather than quick about it so that's uh, just uh, you don't really need if you're following along the code the second part is you know getting the data which is the same as always i always use as state bank for any uh, sort of analysis and then what i have is you know i have done domain knowledge based features which are technical indicators now you have rsi macd atr adx sma ema bollinger bands roc uh, on balance volume and money flow index etc etc these are some examples again uh, there could be more uh, depending on what you have discovered for example there's certain indexes like strength indexes as to how fast uh, it is catching up to a certain level or threshold within a single day that's also strength you could also be looking at uh, you know patterns candlestick patterns and you could see count them within a certain time frame if they have been achieved uh, you can be looking at trend indicators or not uh, you know technical indicators are probably the most in my view difficult to select or removed 
because there's just so much of it. I would want to, uh, you know, when I was thinking about this, I would want to eliminate the extremely complex one if I am using a modeling paradigm like deep learning or something and want to stick to simpler ones. Uh, just to be having you know just to be able to make some sense out of it and then this is the data that you will get a lot of them are NANs but you do drop any and that's that then next is you know uh, the mathematical or statistical features and what you do is this is a simple PCA implementation so what I've done is I've taken all the data and uh, I have just tried to do a fit transform and extract reduce the number of dimensions and uh, define it into a certain limited number of components which is five and these are all the principal components for this data again i have not used this uh, in a strategy or in a machine learning technique to build a model where uh, the output of this should be going so i would definitely warn and give caution that don't directly think that this is something usable this is just a technique and some sample code which can show and help you understand how this fits in this whole uh, game all right so this is the second part of uh, the method which i was trying to share before so i have talked about again domain knowledge based which was the technical indicators and mathematical or statistics based which was the principal component you could be doing more uh, but again, uh, principal components are probably the most easiest to explain out of all the other ones that I've listed like Wavelet and Fourier. And I personally am not sure if I can explain the significance and how they contribute to it yet. So I'm leaving the more advanced uh, feature engineering to a future conversation and hence the third one, uh, machine learning one, is also part of going to be a future conversation. Alright, so that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.